Welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about how to customize the viewports and uh, address any potential problems that most likely you might have run into up to this point. So in this scene I have a basic cube um, on its default shaded view here. And just to recap here you can tap the space bar to switch between full view and four view. Now uh, some common ways to uh, change the viewports is with the number keys. So this is also sometimes a, what causes mistakes by accident when students are pressing number keys while they're trying to change values in the channel box. So these are very common mistakes and I wanted to address them now. Uh, some of these functions, however, uh, you, can, you can use to your advantage. For example, if I hover my mouse over a viewport and I tap the 4 key, I can switch from shaded mode to uh, wireframe. Now, this is view dependent. So if I hover my mouse over a different uh, viewport here and tap the 4 key, I can also make these ones wireframe. So I can see I can do each one one at a time and change them all to wireframe. If I hover my mouse over a viewport and tap the 5 key on my keyboard, I can change them back to shaded, which is what we were at originally. So you can see, back to shaded. Now it's completely up to you. Uh, generally how I like to work is I like to keep my perspective in, in shaded mode and I like to have my orthographic views in wireframe but again it's completely at your options. Um, other keys is if we tap in the viewport we tap the 6 key uh, nothing will, will visibly change but that's preview with textures so when we get to talking about textures eventually down the line uh, that's how you preview textures. So sometimes, if you don't see a texture show up on your in your on your objects, you need to make sure you've tapped the six key in that viewport. And if I tap the seven key, this is one that usually scares students that accidentally do this. Uh, if I tap the seven key in a viewport, it will turn solid black. What this is showing is previewing lights. And currently, if, you know, default scene, there's no lights created, so the object is solid black. So again, this is the four, five six and seven keys on your keyboard and all that matters is wherever your mouse is located. Now another common mistake with the number keyboard here is if you have an object selected and you click on some numbers uh, the one key doesn't is what we're currently on but if I select an object and hit the two key you will show the object what it would look like as if it were smooth smooth process it's a smooth preview and it has the wireframe cage of what the original object looks like. So sometimes students accidentally click on this and not sure what they might have done. Um, alternatively, you can also click the three key, which shows the object in smooth preview, but does not show the wireframe cage around the object. And this is persistent, so if I click off of this and mess with other things, it stays there. So some students don't sometimes get into this and they're not sure what they've done. So I just wanted to point that out. And again, what you want to do is display the object at its actual true resolution for right now. And that's selecting the object and hitting the 1 key. So again, there's the 1 through 7 keys on your keyboard. Uh, and sometimes, like again, students accidentally get into this. So a couple other things about the viewports here, and then I'm going to move on to a, a, another potential problems that you might run into, is the viewports are, um, again, we, you know, we talk about perspective and orthographic views. And just for case those, don't, those that don't know, uh, what that means is orthographic views are locked to a particular axis of viewport. But the other thing is perspective has perspective, meaning things that are farther away appear smaller, things that are closer to the camera appear bigger. Um, in orthographic views, this is not the case. They are always the, the exact true size that they are, which makes them better for lighting things up like for environments and, and such things. So. That's the other, the other difference between orthographic views and the perspective view. So um, another common mistake that students get at this point, and they don't know how to get out of it, and I see students have, is sometimes they accidentally get into, um, uh, into a subcomponent mode. And to do that is they've just right clicked you know, too fast instead of maybe left clicking. And they, you get a different kind of marking menu when you do that. And they get the object turns blue and we, you know, like, okay, how do we change this back? So, again, what this is, is you've entered something called subcomponent mode, which we'll be talking about in great detail in future lectures, but for right now, I'm just, you know, showing you how to, to get back out of this, and to do that again, we want to right-click and hold on an object, 
And what we're currently been, we've been doing is object mode. We're moving the object, the entire object. So if I right click and hold over object, I get it back to this solid grain where I can grab it and move it around. Um, that's a, another a common mistake. And then the last common mistake that I usually see at, at, at this point when in students' education is uh, them accidentally changing the viewports, which I hinted in pr previous lectures. And again, this is usually done by holding down the spacebar too long and then clicking somewhere and you get a different marking menu. Um, so you might actually change it to a different view. Um, that's Granted, that's the way you would get back out of it. You could just hold on the space bar and click and hold and use the marking menu. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it through the panels. Um, it's a little cleaner for those of you that are just starting out. So just take note of your, your view parts here and which ones might be incorrect or which ones you're missing. And like I said, for example, in my case, I have top, left, front, and side. If I wanted to get my perspective view back, or if I, maybe I wanted to move it to a different viewport, that's fine too. What you could do is you can click on the panels of each, of whatever viewport that you wish to change, and go to that panel and change it in the, the drop down here. So if you want a perspective camera, it'd be perspective, PRSP, if I wanted to change my side view, let's say I wanted to see it for, for some reason from the bottom or a different orthographic view, I could click on panels, orthographic view, and maybe change it to the you know the front or the you know the side or move these around however I wanted. We can uh, hover a little bit further, go to new, go to the bottom. We can change the orthographic views however we 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 need. Um, this is also comes uh, pretty valuable down the line when we start creating cameras um, for animation. You can create a, an animation animated camera, but yet still have a perspective camera uh, that that is not animated. Um, so those are the couple of more, more common problems I see at this point. Hopefully those helped you. Um, if not, feel free to uh, drop a, a comment a comment in the uh, in the comment section. And I'll see how I can help you. If we see uh, reoccurring problems, we'll make a, a secondary uh, troubleshooting video for, for those common uh, problems that pop up. See you in the next video. Uh, until then.